respectfully, you look like you're pushing 45. Stop getting filler or Botox, whatever you have. It looks so bad. 45? I get like, okay, maybe like late 20s, 30s. 22, yeah, shocker. When I first started TikTok and started... We interrupt this program to prescribe you with a thousand milligrams of red vitamins. Right here, right here, right now, right now. It's the right time, right time, right time. It's the right time, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now. Tell the whole pie down, pie down, pie down, pie down, pie down. Pie down. Pie down. What's good, Shadow Realm? It's your boy Reclaiming Throne coming at you with another crazy video. But first, my goal is to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe. You already know. Reclaim your throne. Respectfully, you look like you're pushing 45. Stop getting filler or Botox, whatever you have. It looks so bad. 45? I get like, okay, maybe like late 20s, 30s, 22, yeah, shocker. When I first started TikTok and started making filler videos, like come get filler with me or Botox, I used to get these hate comments all the time. There's just people on TikTok that absolutely hate cosmetic procedures and believe that you shouldn't get them. And again, I think it's a personal preference. Like if I want to get filler, I feel like no one should stop you from getting filler because it's your own face. But people always told me that I look older and I get it. I look older. I might act older. Um, but 45? And before I used to cry over these comments and used to delete them and block the account. But now I'm just like... I just laugh at it because I know it's not true. <laughs> um, but I do respect your opinion. Jeez, who is going to tell her? I mean, <clears throat> you have these modern women who are claiming to high heaven that men are the ones making us get cosmetic surgery. Men are the ones who are getting forcing us to get BBLs. Men are the ones who are forcing us to do the lashes, the cumbrellas. Men are the ones who are forcing us to do these, I don't know, spaced out eyebrow things, whatever the hell they call them. Men are the ones who are forcing us to get nose jobs and lip fillers to, to keep up with the beauty standard that men set. <laughs> oh my God, could that not be more false, okay? You have this 22 year old woman who by all means before all this work that she's had done looks very beautiful okay i mean she really does she looks like she had so much potential but she done pumped up her lips it looks like she potentially got cheek filler or something like that that make her eyes look a little slanted and then you know she's got the weight of the world on her shoulders with them ratchet lashes because honey I, I mean i'm gonna tell you right now my girl does lashes and I see how they're supposed to look. She got spacing all in between her lashes. Look like some of them fell out. Maybe she's, you know, uh, she's putting them to use. And then the nut in the in the lashes done got too sticky. She had to pull it out and, and, and some of them just went with it. But her lashes absolutely look atrocious. So she needs to get a different lash tech. But, you know, like I said, we have these women who are getting all these fake procedures and trying to look a certain type of way, trying to fit the mold of the basic Kim K looking ass bitch, okay? And I'm gonna tell you right now, it, it's absolutely getting out of hand. She really does look like, um, who's that That woman from Baywatch? Pamela Anderson. She looks like Pamela Anderson face-wise, but her body obviously hasn't gotten to the Pamela Anderson stage when it comes to Pamela Anderson in her 50s. But she looks like the, the trajectory or direction that Pamela Anderson was going. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, Pamela Anderson, she don't look good like she did back in the day. And mostly it, it had to do with obviously the stress of the lifestyle, but, you know, getting all this cosmetic work done. So 
my advice to all the women keep it natural obviously they're not going to listen we've been telling them to keep it keep it natural since the beginning of time but they insist that men are the ones who are forcing them to get these cosmetic procedures and and you know as a man i'm here to tell you it don't look good this has to be a joke right because there's no way i look like i'm around 50. come on <laughs> that's the highest for sure that i've been guessed i thought 46 was going to be the highest but no now i got this one today <laughs> Okay, so I am going to reveal my real age, and I actually turned 38 in December. Wow. So, one thing that I have learned from doing this How Old Am I Challenge is I'm going to be going and getting some Botox for my crow's feet. I'll be making that appointment next week. Wow. That's what I'll be doing with my tax return is uh, Botox. <laughs> This has to be a joke, right? So this is a 38 year old woman who aged like milk, obviously post wall, um, you know, post -geriac uh, geriatric pregnancy, high risk pregnancy, all that. And, you know, instead of just embracing the natural look, honestly, I, I don't know what she did to look like she looks in, you know, at, at her age of 38. Well, actually I do. It's lifestyle choices. You could tell she's not in shape. You could tell she's not a fit woman. Uh, she probably was extremely pale coming up and she's extremely pale now. And, you know, uh, probably use a lot of makeup, you know, and, and that makes your face look uh, demonstra demonstrably paler after a while, right? And, you know, it's always, when, when girls would take off their makeup, it always looks like they're tired you know, when they take off their makeup. And I think it's their, their face is tired of carrying all that gunk on their face. So when they finally take it off and they stop really caring as far as putting on makeup every single day, then their face really starts to show, you know, the sag and, and, and the years of constant pampering and, 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 and putting the gunk on your face, right? So in this woman's case, I mean, she's 38, she's looking 52, honestly, she looks like my 52 year old teacher from <laughs> from high school like she's looking that old and she's already got the grays in the root of her her hair too you know you see it's, it's graying from the root and then it kind of colors out at the ends so this woman is aging very very fast so i don't know if she needs to decrease her stress levels or whatnot, I know for 100% fact she needs to get active, she needs to get in the gym, she needs to start exercising because that'll bring the skin tighter and make you look a little more youthful. But you hear what she says, she's saying, oh, instead of hard work, instead of doing the hard things, right? I, in, in fifth grade, in fifth grade, I was 10 years old, I read a book called Do Hard Things. It was, it was actually referred to me by my fourth grade teacher and if I can remember his name, Mr. Weaver, okay, and and he, he referred this book to me, and I was going through a hard time. My mother had passed, you know, during that time, and he gave me this book, right, and I'll never forget it. He said, here, reclaim your throne. Here's this book. It's called Do Hard Things. Read the book, and then do hard things. Pause, okay, not in that way, but he's just saying, do difficult things, do things that challenge you, do things that get you outside of your comfort zone, do things that are gonna benefit you in the long run, and if you do hard things now, pause, life is going to be a lot easier in the future. So that is the great advice that I got from my fourth grade teacher, Mr. Weaver, while I was in the fifth grade, so that shows you how much he cared because he's a fourth grade teacher, still keeping communication and, and, and you know develop developing the mind of a fifth grade teacher when he is not necessarily assigned to that specific student but but because he took a liking to me he thought that he would instill some wisdom upon me and i gracefully took that wisdom and ran up the bag you dig so <laughs> you already know i'm on it i do hard things pause uh we in the gym every single day we're working uh, I, I i i started a business very difficult business to be successful in. I started a business. I'm successful in it. I'm winning in life. I've got multiple properties, a lot of land, you know, uh, and, and you know, we're out here. We're out here. And, and shout out to Mr. Weaver because that advice has 
taken me, brought me to the trajectory that I am, you know, besides the leadership and guidance of my father and, and familial uh, personnel, whatnot. But if this woman would just dedicate time to the gym and stop playing around on TikTok, doing whatever the hell she's doing and get on her fitness grind, I guarantee that she would think twice about doing the Botox because, you know, all this cosmetic work, it's not, it's not better than just getting in shape. It's not better than just looking good naturally. And I'm not saying that she looks bad. She looks like a grandmother. She definitely don't look no 38. She looks a lot older than 38. And I think that is because of the lifestyle choices that she chose to embark in. And, um, you know, I mean, she, I'm not going to say, I mean, it's not like she's just like super ugly and hideous. No, I mean, she's grandma vibes. I, I mean, I don't know what to tell her, but if she wants to be more attractive, if she wants to get rid of some of those wrinkles, I think that going to the gym, exercising and shrinking the size of the fat and, and, and the, the weight that you're carrying on your face and on your neck is going to get rid of a lot of those crow's feet that Botox is, you know, supposed to get rid of, but it's really just going to make you look like a clown. Men. You need to stop going on dating apps if you're not actually wanting to date. I sent a text at like noon asking when I was going to see him again. And he's like, I'm busy. Can we talk later? We know it's coming. Eight hours later, I get the audio message. I, you know, I just don't know if I'm ready to date. You know, but you're really super cool and it's not you. I know it's not me. I am cool. I'm emotionally available. I'm hilarious. I'm a blast in a glass and that glass can be full of water or whatever you want it to be. I am a fun time. And you know it and I know it. But why are you on a dating app? It's not me. It is 100% the men. <laughs> Get off the dating apps. Oh my god. And he's like, well, I just want to get your temperature of where you're at. Why does it matter where I'm at? You're telling me your needs. I will respect that. If you don't want to date, fine. What's the point of me telling you how I feel about the situation if you're telling me you don't want to date? No reason to go any further than that. Except for me to maybe tell you to get off the dating app. And the crazy thing is, is that I actually like this one. Of course you did. Oh well. Here I go again. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is the reality of these post-wall modern women. I, 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 I can't stress how important it is to, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's just so important to use your youth wisely, okay? Not going out and getting these ridiculous surgeries and ridic ridiculous cosmetic procedures, but really going and trying to find a man who's going to love you for the rest of your life and treat you well and be nice and be courteous and be kind, but no. That's not what modern women want to do. They want to get on dating apps, as she tells men to get off the dating apps. They want to get on dating apps and screw around. That's really what happened. She got pumped and dumped. She had sex with a guy. He smashed. He papped on the first night. And he told her afterwards, in an audio message, by the way, <clears throat> so he didn't ghost her, but he told her, yeah, it's not my vibe to be dating and stuff like that, but we can still hang out. That's why he was gauging the temperature on how she was feeling because he wanted to know if he could still get up in them cheeks, okay? And she told him no. She said, no, I, you know, I'm not even going to respond. I'm not even going to... But she said, oh, yeah, I definitely like this guy. So I guarantee she's going to turn it to a situation ship. She's going to turn it to a friends with benefits because she thinks or she probably thinks that she can change his mind and she's so fun and, and, and she's you know, a, a full glass of water or whatever the hell she said. <laughs> I mean, the delusion is absolutely insane. You just got pumped and dumped and now you're on TikTok trying to rationalize what happened, why it happened, how it happened. 
but this is how men feel every single day except we don't actually get to experience the sexual part of it we take you out on dates we do all this stuff we make sure you got home safe and then for you to ghost us immediately after why because you were using us as a foodie call i mean it, it, it it's getting to the point where you know these modern women they just they just don't understand they don't get it okay they don't get it and many times they never will they never will you're in your late 30s looking like oh, oh, uh, early 40s and you've been passed around on the dating apps she's still on the dating apps which means she's using them and now she's like up oh, here i am back at it if you think you're gonna find love on a dating app that's not what dating apps are for especially tinder or hinge they are for hookups period and if you don't understand that if you can't understand that then maybe we need to check the temperature of your iq because if you are in 2024 and you think dating apps are literally to find your soulmate, then you've got another thing coming in. What do women always say? Oh, well, it's it's 9 billion people in the world. You're going to find that one. So let's do the math. 9 billion people in the world. Okay, fine. I'll go with it. Half of them are women. So if you are a heterosexual woman or cisgender woman, right, then you are basically knocking off half that so now we're at 4.5 billion you got 1 billion people in china no disrespect to my chinese ninjas you know shout out to y'all okay but let's keep it a bug these westernized women are not dating chinese men okay so that boom that's 3.5 billion now you got another billion in india right let's keep it a buck these westernized women are not dating indian men now indian women will date indian men cool but most of the time, we know through dating app data that Indian men are not select men, okay? So that's knocking off another billion. Now we have two and a half billion. And then you're talking about your geographical location, height requirements, uh, the amount of money that you wanted to make, all these things. It dwindles down and it's no longer a billion anymore. Like they're just saying, oh, there's nine billion people in the world and, and, and you're going to find your soulmate as if every every man in the world is some fine ass nigga waiting to cuff them. No, y'all have standards too, right? So whenever a woman says that, I ask her. Are you going to date 9 billion people? Are you going to fuck 9 billion people? Okay then. So, why are you, why do you think that the whole world is your dating pool? Because it's not. Generally speaking, your dating pool is 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 regionalized toward and and this is not for my passport bros because we know we have the whole world at our oyster uh, or the whole world is our oyster. We have the whole world at our hands, right? But <clears throat> If you are not a passport bro or passport 304 then you don't have this selection uh to to just you know geographically relocate and then find your soulmate unless you are willing to move for a man which most women are not because especially in this day and age because it takes their power away and these women are extremely power hungry that's why they, they cry about the patriarchy all the damn time because they want it to be a matriarchy and it is it really is the, i mean the patriarchy is dead there's no such thing as a patriarchy in 2024 um it is a matriarchy uh, uh, uh um gynocentric world order if you will and it is what it is it's fine i mean select men are still flourishing in this world because at the end of the day i don't care how much of a boss b you are you're gonna want some dick at the end of the day and you're gonna want it from a fine individual who you consider fine so i mean it's just it's just funny to see that they still don't get it they still can't figure it out ma'am you're in your late 30s it's time to go it's crunch time the, the the clock is ticking you need to settle with a beta brad who's your height or a little bit shorter shorter maybe he's a little pudgy but he's got a tech degree and even then i would advise him to get a 20 something but you know most of these guys they're they're not listening to red vitamin guys you know they think we're toxic misogynists and all this stuff so they're trying to push against that and they think that because they're pushing against the red vitamin y'all gonna give them some pussy and we know that's not true so uh anyways i mean good luck on her journey i don't think it's gonna be successful i don't think it's gonna be prosperous hopefully she's already had children by now if she wanted children 
because that ship has essentially sailed. But anyways, you already know what it is. It's your boy Reclaim Your Throne. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. See in relationship quest to email down below with a screenshot of your cash app so no you pay your ties, man. Y'all didn't be in your marketing with the BS. You already know. Reclaim your throne. Want to become an elite level athlete? Well, look no further. The Reclaim Your Throne Elite D1 training course is all you need to take your performance from subpar to the creme de la creme of athletes all around the world. The purpose of this course is to give you a comprehensive weight training, speed, flexibility, recovery, and endurance program that is meant to prepare young athletes for collegiate and professional sports. This course is packed with over two hours of creative, action-packed lifts narrated and coached by yours truly to assure increased strength, speed, flexibility, recovery, and endurance. Hey, I get it. Training alone can be tough and can even make you feel misguided or somewhat unmotivated. But with this course, I walk you step by step through each and every lift to make sure you're using the proper form to prevent injuries and that you're hitting the correct muscle groups to render maximum results. So what are you waiting for? It's now or never. So go ahead and get the training course today so you too can reclaim your throne.